Hi there! In this video, we continue to explore the AI reading list which Ilya Satskever, former OpenAI chief scientist, gave to John Carmack back in 2020. That's the second part in the series, so if you haven't seen the first part, I highly encourage you to do so before moving on. Now, having said all that, let's continue with the reading list. The first item is a rather old paper, keeping neural networks simple by minimizing the description length of the weights, which was written in 1993 by Geoffrey Hinton. He says in this paper that the supervised neural networks generalize well if there is much less information in the weights than there is in the output vectors. And thus, he proposes an algorithm that penalizes the amount of information contained in the weights by adding a learnable amount of Gaussian nodes on the weights during training. So yeah, if you find this topic interesting, definitely give this paper a go. The next item in the reading list is a newer paper released in 2017, and it introduces the pointer networks, which can be thought as a variation of the attention model, where the attention weights are not further used to calculate the context vector for the next time step, and instead, the input time step with the highest weight is considered as the output for the decoder time step. You can see this in the equation which describes the pointer network where the softmax operation over u is not further used to calculate the context vector and the output points directly to the input token, having the maximum value. I have to admit that this is a pretty interesting variation of the attention mechanism and I highly recommend reading the entire paper if you want to better understand pointer networks. The next paper, I believe, requires no introduction. It's the ImageNet classification with deep convolutional neural networks. The paper talks about training large deep convolutional neural networks on the ImageNet dataset, which was quite a controversial topic at the time. Well, we all know what happened afterwards. This model won the ImageNet competition by quite a large margin, and since then the focus in AI has shifted to training deep neural networks, instead of doing a lot of feature engineering and training small models which sprung the deep learning field. So definitely read this paper if you haven't already. It's one of those classical papers that you study to see how the field has evolved since then. The next item is yet another paper. I see that we've got a lot of papers in this video compared to the previous one. And spoiler alert, the other ones are also papers. So coming back, this one is titled Order Matters Sequence to Sequence for Sets. And it shows that the way we organize the input-output data matters significantly when we train recurrent neural networks, which at the time were quite popular for sequence-to-sequence -sequence tasks. Then the authors discuss a possible extension of the sequence-to-sequence -sequence framework, which can handle input sets, and also propose a loss that deals with the lack of structure in the output sets. So yeah, take a look if this topic is of interest to you. The next item is the G-pipe. Easy scaling with micro batch pipeline parallelism, which, as the title of the paper suggests, introduces Gpipe, which is a pipeline parallelism library developed by Google that allows users to split a large neural networks into smaller segments called stages and process them in parallel across multiple devices such as GPUs or TPUs. In short, each pipeline stage is responsible for computing a portion of the neural network and the outputs of each stage are passed as inputs to the next stage, which greatly accelerates the computation of large neural networks on multiple devices. Most likely, such pipeline algorithms have been used to train models like ChatGPT, Llama, or Gemini. So if you want to learn more about how to train such massive models, definitely give this paper a shot. And finally, the last paper for today is another classic, Deep Residual Learning for Image Recognition which introduces the residual block, an important piece of the puzzle that greatly improved deep neural networks. Why? Because before the introduction of this paper, the research community didn't really know how to make deeper neural networks without losing a lot in performance, as you can see in this image. So yeah, definitely, definitely read this paper if you haven't already, as it's one of the papers that pioneered the deep learning field as we know it today. And as a side note, I also have a video which explains why ResNets work, in case you want to take a look. And that's basically it for the second part in the series. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed this video, and please let me know what you think about this new series in the comments below. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with the new parts I am going to release. 
See you in the next one. Bye bye.